Hello class, we're about to start section 2.5, an introduction to problem solving. Our objective is to translate English phrases into algebraic expressions. Example 1, for each of the following, let x represent the number. Use the given conditions to write an expression. Okay, it says here, a number increased by 60. We were told here that we're going to let x represent the number. So a number is x. Increase by, increase by means addition, and we have 60. So our answer here is x plus 60. That is our expression. Remember, expressions do not include equal signs. If it does include an equal sign, then that is an equation. Now we move on to b. A number decreased by 23. We know a number is x. Decreased by means subtraction and 23. Now we look at c. The product of 7 and a number. Now we can write this various ways, but product means multiplication. So I would prefer that you write it as 7x. 7 times x. You do not have to show the multiplication sign. Okay, for D, the quotient of a number and 19. Now, quotient means division, but since we are in Math 31, we can write this basically as a fraction. So we will have x divided by 19. That is our quotient and a number. Now we scroll down. We come to E. It says twice the sum of 4 and a number. First of all, we know twice means multiplication. But it's twice whatever the sum of 4 and a number is. So we need to take the sum of 4 and a number, which will be 4 plus x. And we need to take twice that value. So it will be 2 times the parentheses of 4 plus x. Now we come down here to our objective two. We start off with the strategy for solving word problems. Step one, read the problem carefully several times until you, are, you can state in your own words what is given and what the problem is looking for. Let x or any variable represent one of the unknown quantities in the number. So basically, number one is basically what are you comprehending from the problem? If necessary, step two, if necessary, write expressions for any other unknown quantities in the problem in terms of x. Step three, write an equation in x that translates or models the conditions of the problem. Step four, solve the equation and answer the problem's question. And step five, check the solution in the original wording of the problem not in the equation obtained from the words. Okay, now let's go back and review this. Okay, step one is basically your comprehension of the problem and you basically labeling all of the quantities in the problem. Okay, step two, if you have any unknown quantities or expressions, you need to express that as well. Step three, we need to write the equation in whatever variable that we're using. Now, to make it easy, we have consistently used x for these definitions. Okay, step four, we will solve the equation and answer the problem's question. Typically, we want to answer the problem's question in a complete sentence. And then we want to check our solution uh, according to the original wording. Now we come to example two. Example two states, if the quotient of three times a number and 5 is increased by 4. The result is 34. Find the number. It says define your variables. Now it says if the quotient of 3 times a number. So a number is x. And 5 is increased by 4. The result is 34. So x is our number. Now it says create 
create and label your equation. So we will write this out. It says if the quotient of three times the number, so we will have three x and five. So this quotient would be three x divided by five is increased by four. So this whole quotient, you have to add four to it. The result is 34. Result means equal. So we're saying 3x divided by 5 plus 4 must give us 34. That is our equation. Now we want to solve. So we will write the equation again. And now we will solve this equation. First, we will subtract 4 on both sides of the equal sign. So we have 3x divided by 5 equals 30. Because 4 minus 4 is 0. So 3, 3x over 5 plus 0 will leave us 3x over 5. And 34 minus 4 is 30. Now, we need to get x by itself. And we could do that by multiplying each side of this equal sign by the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. Now, 5 thirds and 3 fifths, we could simplify by cross simplification. 5 simplifies with 5, 3 simplifies with 3, and all of these are just 1. So it'll be 1 times 1 times x, which leaves x. Now we take 30 times 5 thirds. We can make this 30 over 1. 30 times 5 is 150. 1 times 3 is 3. 150 divided by 3 is 50. So, we need to interpret these results. We have x equals 50. Okay, class, the results are these. The number that makes our equation equal is 50. Okay, we scroll down to example 3. Example 3. Page numbers on facing pages of a book are consecutive integers. Two pages that face each other have 629 as the sum of their page numbers. What are the page numbers? Now it says define your variables. Okay class, we're going to define our variables. First of all, our first variable would be x x would be the first page and then because it tells us here that they are the facing pages are consecutive integers the next we will have x plus one would be the next page and I should put next page number and first page number and next page number. Okay, now we have to create and label our equation. So, we don't know what the first page number is, so we will leave that as x. And it tells us here two pages that face each other have 629 as the sum of their page numbers. So we would take the first page number plus the second page number and that should equal 629. Now we want to solve this. So we write out our equation again. We will have x plus the parentheses x plus 1 is equal to 629. So we could drop these parentheses because we cannot do anything inside of it. So we have x plus x plus 1 equals 629. Now we combine like terms. x plus x is 2x plus 1 
equals 629. Now, we need to get x by itself, so we will subtract 1 on both sides, and we will have 2x is equal to 628. So our next step, we're still trying to get x by itself. So we would divide each side by 2, and we will have x is equal to 628 divided by 2 is 314. Now 314 is our first page. So we have x is 314. That represents our first page. And then x plus 1, which represents our second page, would be 315. Okay, now we want to interpret the results. Okay, class. The results are the first page is 314 and the next page is 315. Now we scroll on down to our next example. We have example 4 here. A car rental agency charges $200 per week plus 15 cents per mile to rent a car. How many miles can you travel in a week for $320? So we must first define our variable. Okay, now, our variables goes like such. It says, how many miles can you travel in a week? So we know our variable would not signify the weeks. It says, how many miles can you travel in a week for $320? So X is our miles. Okay, now we need to create and label our equation. So we're told that we're trying to find how many miles we could travel in a week. So for a week, automatically we pay $200. So it's $200. That would be our constant. Now we have to add the miles traveled, which would be 15 cents per mile. with our X value connected to the 15 cent because we don't know how many miles we've traveled. And then finally, this is supposed to equal $320. Now, we write this out to solve. We will have $200 plus 15 cents a mile, which is Point fifteen times x is equal to $320. So now we solve. We will subtract 200 on both sides. And we will be left with 0.15x is equal to 120. Now we divide each side by 0.15. And we're left with x is equal to, so now we have x is equal to 800. Because 120 divided by 0 0.15 is 800. Now, what this means is, is 800 miles. Okay, now. Well, that's what x is equal to. x is equal to 800 miles. Okay, now we want to interpret the results. Our results are, for $320, you could travel 800 miles in one week. Okay, now, we scroll down here. This is the last problem of the day, example five. Now, with example five, it says, including 6% sales tax, a car sold for $23,850. Find the price of the car before the tax was added. Now, this problem I want you to try on your own and bring it to class, and then we can discuss it. Thank you.